Hi everyone, JJ here with The Art of Value. Welcome. Well, it's 13F time again, when famous investors, guru investors, super investors have to legally say what they've been buying and selling during the quarter so we can see their activity, some of the best investors in the world. So it's good for retail investors, people learning to see what they've been buying. Charlie Munger has often said, fish where the fish are, and this is a way of doing that. I mean, we can buy thousands, there are tens of thousands of companies around the world. So to see what these investors are focusing on is a good place to start not to necessarily copy them at all, just to maybe reverse engineer what they've been doing, see what they've been buying, see what's interesting and dig in further. Because we know that these are great investors, but they sometimes get it wrong too. And let's look at what they've been buying in the quarter. We're going to look at Monish Pabrai, we're going to look at Chuck Akra, we're going to look at Seth Klarman, and we're going to look at Tom Gaynor. So let's get into it. Okay, first up is Monish Pabrai. We can see in this past quarter, he has bought a new company, Arch Resources. You might have seen my previous video for the last quarter from Manish Pabrai. He bought two companies in that last quarter. These are just the US holdings. We'll have a look at the international holdings in a minute. Data Roma here just shows the US holdings, but he has bought in the US. He said he's found it hard to find companies in the US as opposed to internationally. He's invested in Turkey and India and other places. But he's bought another company and it's another coal company. So that's three coal companies. Arch Resources this time, 7.87% of his US portfolio that is. He's bought and shares 78,000 shares. If we look at the activity in the quarter, we can actually see that he added to Console Energy, that coal company, 94.9% he added to and Alpha Metallurgical Resources, another coal company, he added 21.75% to, and of course that buy Arch Resources. You can see in the quarter before he sold out of Micron Technology, Brookfield Corp, and Seritage Growth Properties, which he only had a little bit of. But he went into these coal companies, he said in an interview that they were in a very good financial position, beaten down, and we can see that, we'll have a look at that. Now this is more of Pabro's Holdings, I'm not sure if it's all of them, but Ticket Terminal, which is a link in the description for Ticket Terminal, referral link if you want to have a look at that, but this shows more than the US is International Holdings, and we can see here that he actually added to racist, seems like he's added to racist from Turkey in the quarter, 100%. And Alpha Metallurgical Resources, we can see that add of 21.75%. He owns Edelweiss, but he added 1.24% to that. Holding in terms of the portfolio is 11.63. And Racist is now up to 35.98% of the portfolio. We know he has other holdings. He does own Process, which is a 10 cent bet. Because Process owns a big chunk of 10 cent. And then we see Alpha 25%, Edelweiss 11.63, Suntech Realty, which is 11.61%, Console Energy, the other coal companies at 9%, and Rain Industries, which is an Indian company, industrial type of company, I believe, it's 3.77%, and that new buy Arch Resources at only 2.91%. But now the three US coal companies. I think what from what he said from previous interviews that these are beaten down, they've got lots of cash and coal is definitely trending out. A lot of focus on renewable energy. It's just so out of favor, so beaten down that probably nobody wants it. And sometimes value investors do this. They go into things that are unloved, un unwanted and see if there's anything to buy there. And I think this is what Pabrai's done here. He has no problem about investing companies to do with climate change in a negative way at all. It's just about the money here. Now, if we have a quick closer look at that company, I don't know anything about it yet. Arch Resources, as I said, I'm not interested in coal at all. We can see that year to date, if we go back and we see at the end of the quarter, we can see that it's gone up in that last quarter. We have no way of knowing when he bought it during that quarter, but it has gone up and it peaked into the September 25th and has gone down a bit since then. And we can see about the company, it says Art Resources produces and sells thermal and metallurgical coal from surface and underground mines. As of December 31, 2020, the company operated seven active mines, coal around the US, different sites around the US. Now a quick look on Guru Focus here. Again, there's a link in the description for that if you want to take a look at Guru Focus if you haven't seen that before. It's a good value-focused financial site, and here we might get an inkling of why he invested in this company. We can see that it says it's a bit overvalued here, but that's without digging into the financials at all, but it has gone up in that last quarter. 
according to the site guru focus it did drop down into the buy zone we can see the gross margin is 22.69 I would say it's probably high for companies like this. Operating margin, 19.55. I'd say that's probably high for the industry. Net margin, 25. Return on equity, 59. Return on assets, 34. Return on invested capital, 44. So we can see, get an inkling of why Pavro might be interested in this company. Return on capital employed, 32, which is high. If 15 is about the average for the S&P 500, 32 is very high. And debt to equity, 9. I could see that he thinks with these other coal companies, they had a lot of cash. What is the market cap of this company? It's 2.84, so small cap, enterprise value of 2.5. So we can see why Papro might be interested in this company. Some of the other metrics superficially, we can see the PE ratio is 3.75. Price to sales ratio is 0.92. So we can say that Papro probably thinks this company is cheap, cheap enough to buy. He said he hasn't found many in the US but in the coal industry the beaten down coal industry I think he obviously thinks there's some good buys and he's been looking more in that area so I'd say this is probably a short-term play I really doubt whether he would be holding this for the long term he is into compounders these days but I think these coal companies are a move back to value plays perhaps short term while he's looking for more compounders he's found some obviously but he's in no hurry for that maybe he sees this moving fairly quickly and making money and then getting out of it that would be my guess i have no idea but i would say that but some of these metrics would point to that now if you're getting value out of this episode so far and you're watching on youtube or on rumble or on x please don't forget to hit that like button to help the algorithm to spread it to more people now if you want to take your appreciation of the art of value to the next level you can now go here to buy me a coffee just a small one-off donation not a membership or anything and i'd really appreciate that thanks now moving on to another one of my personal favorites, Chuck Acra, Acra Capital Management. I believe Chuck Acra is a retired now, but I think he probably still has quite a lot to do with the investing here, I'd say. But they do have some pretty good analysts there, some pretty good investors working there as well. And we can see in this last quarter, we can see the movement there. Not a lot of movement, just a fraction on American Tower Corp. That is one of their hundred baggers over time. It's one of Chuck Acra's stocks that he bought way back during the dot-com boom and bust for under a dollar i believe and it's been a hundred bagger over time they're known to have more than 100 bagger berkshire hathaway is another one and berkshire hathaway is down in their portfolio at 0.06 percent at this time if you look at their portfolio it's like a museum piece of many multi-baggers over time which they've had for many years we've got mastercard there chuck acris talked in interviews and podcasts about mastercard and visa together how the financials are so good the moats are so good he doesn't give it all away but he talks about how great those companies are together and he and they own both mastercard is 21 percent of the u.s portfolio and we'll look at the international portfolio in a minute because these are not all of them. We've got Moody's Corp at 14.79%, American Tower at, at 10, Visa, KKR and Co, O'Reilly Automotive, Roper Technologies, which is a value investor favorite in the last few years, Brookfield Corp, CoStar Group. There are a list of quality companies that have been multi-baggers, compounders over time. Digital Bridge Group interests me because that's quite a new holding and it's a small cap, which I'm most interested in. It's digital infrastructure, so maybe they're thinking that it could be another American Tower, possible American Tower over time, because American Tower, it's mobile phone towers and digital infrastructure around the world, and so is Digital Bridge, but much smaller. They have you know, AI infrastructure, data centers, and towers as well, but it's all completely digital. So I'm wondering if they think this is going to be similar over time. However, they have reduced to 11.41% in this quarter, which indicates that they're not kind of all in, or maybe they think it's too a bit expensive at the moment, but they haven't sold completely out of it. But it'll be interesting to see what happens over time from quarter to quarter. I'm watching to see if they add to that or take it away. If we look at the actual activity over quarters, we can see that they haven't done much in this past quarter. They added to CoStar Group 1.94%. I mean, these are such small moves. American Tower just still adding to that after all this time, after decades of owning it. And KKR, they added 11% to. 
and a little bit of reduction, reduced Berkshire Hathaway, reduced, these are just small, such small increments that they're getting rid of that it's sort of inconsequential. Dollar Tree is interesting, they, it was 4.56 they got rid of here, Dollar Tree's kind of been in the news a little bit lately. Brookfield Asset Management, they added two, and as I said, Digital Bridge Group, they sold down a little 11.41%, which is kind of the most, except for Adobe, they sold out of Adobe, which was one quite a big holding, I think. So that's been a long-term compounder, and they've sold 100%. That would be the biggest news there. Sold 100% of Adobe. And in the quarter before that, they sold down Adobe 11.26. We can see the history of their buys and sells with Adobe. They reduced. They've been reducing for several quarters, really. 3.27% they reduced before that. And the quarter before that, they reduced again 25%. So they have been selling down Adobe for quite a while. We see in Q4 2022 that they were adding to Digital Bridge Group back then. And in Q3 2022, they were adding to Digital Bridge Group there. And even adding to Adobe just a little bit there. So they've changed their mind on Adobe and sold out of it. I'm wondering if they think that this disruption coming to Adobe with other competitors, because they do concentrate on this moat they like big moat companies with a long runway for growth perhaps they think the growth with adobe is ending there it implies that if they've sold 100 percent so i think that's very interesting if even the quarter before that in q2 2022 they were buying a digital bridge then 56 percent ad then but they were adding to adobe back then as well so they've been selling out they've changed their mind on adobe by the look of it selling out 100 percent these are not traders, these are long-term investors, so they obviously think that there's something has happened for the thesis of Adobe. That is quite big news, I think. Now let's go over to Ticket Terminal and see the international holdings of Accra Capital as well, because the picture changes a little bit when you're just looking at the US stocks. A lot of people just do that, but there's more to it. And one of the big standouts here is Constellation Software from Canada, a Canadian company, which is actually 9.55% of the portfolio. Another long-term holder, another quality company. I've made a video recently, or more than one video about Constellation Software and its spin-off Topicus, which is also in this list here. Down here, Topicus is 3.4% of the portfolio. They would have got shares when it was a spin-off. The other spin-off down here, Lumine from Constellation Software, so Topicus, which I made a video about just recently, it's the same business model, but it's a European market, which is lots of different countries over there, of course, but they're doing that same model, compounding, buying small software companies in Europe. And so that is doing well so far. It's a new, really new spinoff. And I bought shares, full disclosure, I bought shares near the spinoff and it's doing pretty well so far. And it's the smaller caps that I'm interested in. And if a fund like this is starting to buy these small caps, and they're long holders with long, they were like long runways with good management. These are always good places to look for these super investors. What are they buying and why are they buying it? Next up is Seth Klarman from Baupost Group, one of the most famous value investors of our time. He's had a very good record over time. He followed Warren Buffett. He, he talks about Warren Buffett's teachings. He wrote the book Margin of Safety, which is a really good book and quite hard to get in an actual physical form. Those copies are selling for a lot on eBay, for instance. They do hold quite a lot of stocks. He's known as a value investor. So quite often the stocks that they buy are, would be fairly cheaply valued. But let's see what they've been doing in this last quarter. They own quite a few stocks, but it is concentrated more towards the top. We've got Liberty Global as the top US investment there and Veritiv Corp. Alphabet is number three at nearly 10%. Fidelity National Information Services 7.48. Liberty Sirius and they've been adding and reducing to some of these stocks. Alphabet they reduced 7% in the quarter and Liberty Global they reduced a little bit too. They added quite a lot to CRH It's but it's only 356 again. Value investors tend to be heavily weighted towards the top. Even Warren Buffett, of course, with Apple at the top there. If you look at the top, say five or six, they're usually a lot more than the rest down here. And it goes down the list. They've got some pretty small positions there. But if we look at the activity for the quarter, we can see the main buys. The main activity there is CRH and Dollar General. That's been in the news quite a lot recently. Dollar General taking a bit of a beating. It's not surprising that he'd buy it at lower prices if it's gone down. Fidelity National Information Services 
Clarivate Tower Semiconductor. So that's interesting getting into the semiconductor business there. I'm not aware of that company. We'll have a quick look at that. Jacob Solutions and Liberty Media Corp. So more well-known names. And selling out of Amazon, Garrett Motion, which is is automotive. I think it's turbochargers. I've seen that before. So selling out of Amazon and Union Pacific totally in that quarter. Now, if we go over to Ticket Terminal, we see there's really not many international positions there, but Just Eat Takeaway is in there at 5.01%. That's interesting. I believe that's headquartered in the Netherlands, sort of takeaway services, food delivery. So it's interesting that they've got some of that. Such a quite a big position, really. And Clarivate's in there at 2.58. And Tower Semiconductor at 1.2. Now, let's have a quick look at Tower Semiconductor because that's an interesting one. It's actually a small cap. It's $2.81 billion market cap. Looks like it's an Israeli companies enterprise value is 2.1 so interesting for me that it's a small cap that's what i'm interested in i'll add that to my small caps list when i do a live stream now in case you're unaware let me tell you that i've started something new i've started live streaming five days a week daily while the u.s market is open i'm streaming to youtube but on a different channel stocks today with jj and on twitch as well at the art of value and i'll be uploading it sometimes to spotify so you'll see it there and to rumble as well now it's not everyone's cup of tea they're like hour long live streams but do check that out i'll put a link in the description to that as well so check that out if you want to i talk about the small caps i've got i follow the small caps list and also AI is related to AI as well. Why is he interested in it? We can see from Guru Focus here that it says that it's modestly undervalued and worth about 33.96. Current price is 26.69. And if we look at the share price over this year, we can see that it's been kind of going down all year and just taken a turn up just recently but some of the metrics here we can see the gross margins 20 nearly 28 operating margin 17 the return on capital employed is about 12 the net margin 17.86 debt equity equity is only 0.11 so i can see why he might be interested in this the pe ratio is currently 10.81 so an, an interesting pick there from the balpost group is in semiconductors a small cap semiconductor from israel just a quick description of that company it says tower semiconductor Conductor Limited is a pure play specialty foundry that manufactures semiconductors. As a pure play foundry, it focuses on producing integrated circuits based on the design specifications of customers. The company's line of integrated circuits is incorporated into a variety of products and markets, including consumer electronics, personal computers, communications, automotive and industrial and medical devices, as you expect with all of that. Tower produces ICs alongside wholly owned subsidiaries through fabrication facilities located in Japan. And another company they added to there was Clarivate. Let's have a quick look at that. We can see that the market cap is 4.8 billion. So again, around a small cap, getting fairly large. Enterprise value is 10 billion though. So there's quite a difference there. Debt to equity is 0.74, it says. Gross margin is 65, operating margin just 9, net margin around 10, They're around 10 for both of those actually, and return on invested capital is 5. Guru Focus is saying that it's worth 18.19, currently it's 7.24, so perhaps this is one reason why Seth Klarman or Balpost Group is interested in this. It says it's possibly a value trap, think twice, but I mean it's deeply undervalued. And obviously Seth Klarman or his analyst there at Balpost Group think that it's actually deep value at this point. So that that's a this is a typical of value investor like Klarman to go in when things look bad. The metrics don't look bad to me so far, just on the face of it, superficially. It's not investment advice at all. I'm just looking, this is the first time I've seen this company. And obviously they've dug into it deeply and think that it's good value. It's not a massive position. It's 2.58%, which is substantial, but not a massive position. So that's an interesting buy for this past quarter for the Balpost Group. And finally, we're going to look at Thomas Gaynor. Tom Gaynor from Markel, who's a CEO of Markel, and is in control of investments there. Has been for a long time. 20 years, I believe, or so he's been at the company, maybe more. Now, I've talked about Tom Gaynor before. In the last quarter, I talked about his picks. The way he invests is quite different to many investors. You can see that they own a lot of companies here. See that? But some of them, most of them are very, very small kind of incremental buys. And they go down to 0 0.0. But up the top, we see Berkshire Hathaway, 7.15 for the A shares. 
and 6.48% for the B shares. So it's a lot of Berkshire Hathaway there. And actually Berkshire Hathaway has bought some of Markel in the last few quarters, I noticed. So it's a mutual admiration society. Markel is known as a baby Berkshire. They're a mid cap, so a lot of compounding to come, we hope. I do own shares in Markel. Disclosure there that I do, and I plan to hold it for the long term. If all goes well, it's been kind of going sideways for the last five years or so. And Tom Gain has talked about that. He thinks that it's going to compound forever. And he's been buying shares, actually. He's been buying quite a lot of shares as well himself. So it's good to see that. It's good to see when insiders are buying like that. So that portfolio is worth about $8 billion at this point. So it's getting pretty big. They do similar things to Berkshire Hathaway. It is insurance as well. It's like Berkshire. They invest in companies directly and stocks and companies increasingly they've been doing it directly buying whole companies and partial stakes in companies but as we can see there Berkshire's the biggest holding there then Alphabet which has been fairly new recently Tom Gaynett it's not really in the circle of competence to buy tech but it's maybe it's becoming in a circle of competence or he has hired analysts there that do handle technology it's not just him there but he is in control of it so Alphabet is 4.38% at this point. Deer & Co., another quality company, 3.46. Home Depot, which is 3.36. And Brookfield, which comes up in quite a few of these super investor portfolios at 3.29. Amazon, another big tech name, 3.11%. And Visa, Apple, and then it goes down. This is like getting to 2.5% and then it goes down rapidly. So the way that Tom Gaynor invests, I've explained this before in other videos, is that he sees it like a sports team. He's explained it in William Green's book, Richer, Wiser, Happier. One of the chapters was on him. He talks about it as a sports team where if he gets interested in a company, he might just buy a little bit incrementally. And over time, if it gets better, he might buy more and buy more incrementally. So the company will be on the bench, starting off on the bench and then into the field of play. And if they play better, it'll be incrementally up. So it's over time. And he has been beating the market over the long term. Perhaps not like a Buffett, but as I said, Markel itself, there's a lot of compounding to come. If you compare it to Berkshire Hathaway, it would be Berkshire a long time ago. And a lot of the compounding comes later on. Well, that's the th that's the kind of the thesis, my thoughts on it anyway. So but holding long term is difficult, especially when it goes, things go sideways for quite a long time. Let's just have a look at the activity for the quarter and see what he's been up to. You can see there on the right, the change in the portfolio is very incremental, but we can see there he added to Choice Hotels, which I think he sold down a little bit. They did sell during the pandemic. They sold quite a few stocks. I think they wanted to free up cash for other things, being an insurance company, but he's bought buying back Choice Hotels by the look of it or buying more. Uber is another one that he's been buying incrementally, it's, but it's only 0.01% change. Very small. LPL Financial, Thermo Fisher. You can see Renaissance Holdings, Tyson Foods, Anheuser-Busch, CarMax, Eastman Chemical. So these incremental buys over time. There's a lot of small buys there over time. You can have a look through there. Scott's Miracle Grow. That's interesting. That's related to the cannabis industry, but not plant touching. NVR, a favorite with value investors. It's known as a Uber cannibal. It's been buying back a huge amount of its own shares, just buying back, buying back over time. And that's increased the value hugely. And that's in the building industry. And they've got a slightly different business model to many home builders. I won't go into that here. I have analyzed that company before. It's a good company, but I haven't, I don't own any shares in that company. Mesa Platforms, interesting to see they're buying that. Caterpillar, there's just so many companies here, so it'll be interesting to see if any of these over time go higher in the percentage in the portfolio. So let's have a look at the sales, perhaps more interesting, where he's lost conviction. They've lost conviction in this past quarter. Liberty Broadband, Liberty Global, Sony Group. Those are just small sell downs, actually, but Sony Group's 41% and 100% out of Liberty, Sirius XM and Healthcare Services and Skyward Specialty Insurance. So that's what they've been doing for that quarter. Just incremental as always for Thomas Gaynor. Now if you're watching on YouTube, I'm going to put a video here of what YouTube thinks that you should watch next. So go and see that now. And thanks for watching or listening everyone. And I'll see you in the next one.